Hello and welcome to another review brought to you by AC Delco. Today we've got the car that the UAE has been frothing at the mouth to try out, the Tesla Model S. Yes, this is the electric car of the future, the one that you've been hearing all the hype about. With supercar performance, family car practicality and a price tag that's pretty expensive. So what have we got here? We've got a starting price of 275,000 dirhams for the P60D and goes all the way up well into the half a million spot for the P100D with fantastic performance. What we've got here is the 90D with all-wheel drive it does have a fairly significant price tag 350,000 dirhams so that it means it's an all-wheel drive car that's 0 to 100 in about four and a bit seconds and a top speed of well over 250 now the question with electric cars has always been the same what's the battery range this one does about 420 430 kilometers to a um, tank I guess it's electric car styling is by Franz von Holhausen he has an incredibly slippery CD just 0.24 about the same as the Toyota Prius and the only car to beat it is actually the Audi A4. It doesn't need a radiator grill, so what you get under the hood is a small trunk or a frunk and a hatch to refill the windshield wiper fluid. Now that's the only maintenance you need to do on a Tesla because obviously there is no oil to change or any moving parts at all. As far as styling goes, I think Tesla could have been a little bit more adventurous. The Model S isn't a particularly distinctive or striking car. You might not notice it in traffic, but it does have one advantage of being quite a big car. This is pretty much S-Class size. The boot is quite big, it'll take two golf bags and all your luggage and actually the seats flip down because by the way, this car is a hatchback. So you can even put two seats in the back if you want to put more people facing out to the rear. But enough about the outside of the car, let's go check out the inside where there's a lot to talk about as you'll see. In some versions, the Tesla is actually a seven seater, it has two rear facing seats. And to be honest with you, this is where the concept car origins of the Tesla really come to fore. I mean, the back seat isn't great. It's set very low to obviously have great handling and lower center of gravity. But it does mean that rear seat passengers struggle. I'm not particularly tall. I'm about 5'9", five, 5'8". Five, and it's, there's a little bit of cutouts here to take my legs, but it's not great. Look how much my legs are up as well. This seat is really, really low. Seat's quite nice. I wish I could change the angle, but this is it. And headroom, not great either. I mean, Shazad would not be able to sit back here. These headrests, not adjustable. You know, looks beautiful but if you're a taller person it's not so ideal what do we have in terms of toys you do have rear ac vents but like the front they're very small they're very very small so the cooling performance isn't so good especially in the back there are two usb ports down here but they practically look like afterthoughts like somebody just stamped them into the plastic so in theory yes you have everything you need but i would not want to spend a lot of time here on long journeys So what happens when Silicon Valley builds a car? When you tear up the rule book, just toss it out and start from scratch, you end up with something like the Model S, which is a car that is dominated by this giant 17-inch display. I know you want to talk about it, I know you want to look at it, but let's get back to that in a second, because I want to look at some other things in this car that are quite interesting. First of all, let's talk about the quality. Now, this car was designed by Franz von Holzen on the outside, von Holzhausen, if I have his name correctly. And the interior feels also very concept. It's got this lovely swooping leather and this stitching, contrast stitching on the sides. It is quite pretty to look at, but it doesn't feel particularly robust. So where do I put my stuff? There's no bins in the doors here. You've got the window switches down here, which also have, of course, the mirrors and so on, things like that, but they're all down here. There is the switch here to move this up and down the steering column the steering wheel itself is very very clean all you have here is this one roller up and down which toggles the i guess the stereo the climate control but very limited functions actually because this huge display and a back button here voice control and on the left you have stereo control so volume up and down and of course next track i kind of want more in a car that's this complicated, because, but they really want you to do everything through the main screen. Seating position is very, very comfortable. This seat was designed by people who really understand good driving. I can get as low as I want. It's very, very cosseting is the word. And it holds you quite nicely when you fling it through corners. The steering wheel surface is also very, very nice to hold. Good touch points all around. Everything is covered in very nice leather. In the center, you have two bins. This is your only storage space, really. You can have two two-liter bottles down here. I'm just keeping my mobile and my wallet down here because there's nowhere else to keep it. And there's one small space here as well. Two USB ports and a cigarette, not cigarette lighter. This is a PowerPoint. Sliding places to keep your elbow rests. And if you pull them all the way back, you get this cup holder, which is a very funny place to keep a cup holder. You just you would bump into your arm all the time. I don't like that. There's a space down here. I suppose you could keep an 
iPhone down there, I suppose you could. But enough faffing about, let's talk about the screen. So the Tesla philosophy is that everything is done through the center screen. It's very, very intuitive, very easy to figure out, but there are a couple of quirks to it. So I'll just run through it very quickly. So the car is actually controlled all through this little lower left-hand side corner, which says controls, and that pops up a very, very big display, which allows you to control everything about the car. This would be the settings in any of the car, but in the Tesla, it's particularly powerful. So you can actually control the sunroof millimetrically. It actually moves down 51%. Who wants to open a sunroof 51%? But Tesla nerds apparently do. I think it's quite cool that it does that. You could see a live animation of it moving. All very geeky. Suspension. You can set the suspension. Now, this car is actually set to Esprit mode. So I've changed the display from a Tesla to a Lotus Esprit from a spy who loved me. And you can set the height of the suspension, which is in depth and leagues. They're very funny, Elon. 10,000, 20,000, and so on. Diving mode, which is what you refer to all the various settings. So you can set the steering weight from comfort, standard and sport. Sport being quite heavy, comfort being quite soft for driving on car parks and things. You can traction control off here. There's also range mode for like real, real electricity sipping, I think is the word we use. It basically makes the car incredibly eco-friendly. It's like an eco mode in any other car. Cold weather, completely pointless in this market, but it allows you to set heated steering wheel, heated vipers and all the seats are heated. Why isn't it air conditioned? Trips. This is all the obvious trip computer stuff. Again, this is all stuff that will be in the dashboard, but it's here on this iPad. You can reset all of it. The odometer says 1600 kilometers. Displays, you can change the brightness just like you can on an iPhone or an Android device. And there's even an energy saving mode. And finally, power off and e-brake. Down here, you can open everything remotely. The charging port, which is actually mechanized, the trunk, the doors, and the front trunk or the frunk. And you can control the ambient lighting as well. It's all very, very techy. So, We've got everything down here, it's divided into two halves. You can actually maximize this and make it a full screen or you can make it a half screen and share space up and down. On the bottom, you have your basic crucial controls. And I really wish there were redundancies, but there aren't, there are no physical buttons. So you have climates so or seat heaters, uh, temperatures and climate on or off. Up here, we've got time, uh, cell phone reception, Bluetooth connection, this Tesla button, if you press it, gives you information about the car, like about in a window screen. This is charging, so this tells you how much kilometers range you've got, 216 kilometers, and you can have scheduled chargers, and you can set the amount of current you're charging with the car. So the charge limit is quite handy, that allows you to decide how much you want to charge it up to, the full amount, which is trip, or a daily minimum. This is for basically the length of the battery and how long it'll last. I would just charge it up all the way, and you can even open the charge port remotely. So running very quickly through everything else, top here, this is your music, so it sets the lower half to basically being your tune-in, Spotify, radio, or your phone. And that plays, Ooh. there we go. Again, say you want to pick a station. It's not so obvious. It's like, where do I put my stations, right? Stations, but this is not all of them. So to actually see all of them, you have to maximize them. And then you get a full list of stations. Again, looks very cool. Can be a little finicky to use. Oh, it's always, you're always pressing the screen. Imagine doing this when you're driving. Navigation, Na uh, Tesla cars in the Middle East will come with a GSM card that allows you to use over the air updates, that allows you to uh, basically do navigation. They don't have them yet, but they're working on them. So this is basically, the car will be a full-time Google Maps screen. Can't really see it because this card doesn't have a SIM card, but it behaves just like Google Maps would. And also, this is charging point. So you pull this up, you get to see all the nearest charging station and you just navigate you to them. Calendar, so that went down there for some reason. That allows you to check out your phone calendar. So it syncs up with your phone and all your appointments, everything shows up here. This is the charging stuff. Oh, hold on. Consumption. This shows how the car has been used. And clearly some people have been driving it very aggressively and I have been more sporadic. So it allows you to see the various ranges. This shows your limited range, about 217 kilometers left and various settings for that. Average range, instant range. It's very nerdy. Most people play with it once and then just drive it like a normal car. This is an internet browser. So you can actually use it as a web browser. Who would do that while driving? This is something very much while you're stopped. And again, we don't have a SIM card, so it doesn't work. Camera. So this is a very, very broad view camera. So it allows you right behind you. It's actually incredibly high res. I'm very impressed by it. And it's not just that, because in front of you, you can see literally down to the centimeter where the nearest obstacle is. So it's actually very, very precise. So maneuvering in this car is pretty straightforward. It doesn't seem to have an overhead camera, which for a high-tech car, you really think you'd have an overhead 360 camera, but it doesn't. And finally, phone.
So my phones are connected by allows you to make your calls and contacts and so on. So it's all very, very cool. And if you press this, it swaps them around, which is very handy. So it's just very, very complicated at first glance, but then it becomes second nature very easily. The only problem is when you're on the go, a lot of this stuff requires looking at the screen. And I'm not such a big fan of that. This is stuff that really should be operated when you're sitting in a stop. But other than that, it's a very, very cool project. As a Silicon Valley 1.0 product, it's meant to impress, and it does. I think the second generation will really be something to look forward to. The Tesla's got lots of amazing electronic gadgets, but one thing it doesn't have is an oil filter because it's an electric car. But you probably need one. And if you do, you want to talk to the people from AC Delco who make oil filters for just about any car. We'd like to thank AC Delco for sponsoring these videos and hope you go check them out. So we're about to drive the Tesla Model S, the car of the future for the first time. And I'm looking for the, all the obvious things that you get in a normal car, like a key or a start button, but there isn't one. What you actually have to do, and this is literally all you have to do, apart from put on your seatbelt, like a sensible person, is press the brake. And that's it, the car dashboard lumps on, everything is good to go, and the car is on. It's really, really weird. I expect the noise of an engine, but there isn't one. All you do is press the brake and the car is good to go. So you never quite know if it's on or off. So going away, of course, is the usual Mercedes style cruise talk. So press in for park, reverse neutral, drive. So drive and that's it. We're off. No revs, nothing. I've turned creep mode off. Creep mode, of course, makes it behave like a normal automatic. So this one, you have to press it and it's on very super regenerative braking. So let's see what it's like. It's like being in the world's fastest golf cart. <laughs> it's actually really quick. That was 100 kilometers per hour, just like that in the blink of an eye. This car does it in about four and a bit seconds, about 4.4. And it is really, really quiet. All you can hear is wind noise, but it still feels like a normal car. Coming up a turn, let's see what the steering is. I kept it in standard. Corner is really flat for something this big. <laughs> That's actually really good. So the steering is uh, pretty well weighted. There isn't a lot of feedback coming back. Obviously this is electric steering, but it's really, really good. Car responds very nicely. There's not much deadness on center. It just feels like a really nice, well-sorted sports sedan with practically limitless acceleration. Any other car you sort of accelerate, it feels like you've got to, you know, wind up the gearbox. You've got to push the accelerator, move it along. This thing feels like it has lungs, like a swimmer. It just woof, it just pushes you into the horizon. So one of the cool things about this car is it has auto steer, autopilot, so it can actually drive itself. Yeah, this is the thing you all heard about. I'm going to show you how you do it. So you're just driving along, keep it under about 50 and then tap, double tap the steer cruise control stock and it's driving itself. It says keys, keep your hands on the wheel, but it is now driving itself. It's seeing the lines you can see in the road in front of you. It's actually driving itself. So it's monitoring the road, measuring the road and I don't have to do anything right now. I don't recommend you do this. I do recommend you keep your hands on the wheel, gently. But 50 is not really usable right now. Or Tesla says they'll open it up down the line. So hopefully Middle East cars will have full auto steer and autopilot soon. I should also make a note about this air suspension on this car. The ride is extraordinary. It keeps sitting very flat, but I'm going over some bumps now. I can hear it on these big tires. These are 21s, but I don't feel it inside. This ride is extraordinary. It feels like a Rolls Royce, which is high praise for a a first-time car manufacturer and they let off the gas and immediately I don't I'm coming up to a corner I don't have to take, use the brake at all it's just slowing down there isn't a lot of body roll you notice the car is very very stable so how does the Tesla compare to a regular normal car I think very well most people are gonna get into this and feel like they're driving a normal very well sorted German sports saloon but there are a couple of things everything is an LCD screen and your brain is now trained to look at screens so it's very hard to pay attention to the road because I'm looking now and like something's popped up and I'm like oh I want to attend to that I actually shouldn't be I should be looking at the road the screen in front of you this is pretty well laid out but this doesn't have enough information whereas this has too much of it so these are things that are fine when you're a very rich person and you drive this car but a normal person they want volume knobs they want AC climate controls they don't want to be faffing about with this screen so these are things that the car very much feels like it's in beta test for those things. As an experience, again, it's a very limited test drive. As a car to drive, it is phenomenal. I mean, I am absolutely staggered by how much they've got right. We've driven electric cars before and they feel so shonky, but this one doesn't. You should check out the Tesla. It is a 
something special. It feels like I'm driving the future today. And on that note, it's time to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and all the rest on Motoring Middle East. And a big, big thank you to AC Delco for sponsoring these videos and making these reviews possible. Until next time, bye.